my God, I love Celsius. Orange by far is my favorite flavor. Anyway, today we will be starting a new watercolor painting on this wonderful Arches 300 gram, 140 pound test watercolor paper, cold press. As you can see, it's rather sturdy. So I'm using some books to hold it down while I cut it. Uh, this paper was introduced to me by my art professor when I was in Spain, Professor Richard Gruder, great guy. And I've been using this paper for, I don't know, a few years now. And right here, I'm just kind of, you know, measuring it out against my artboard there. And I try and keep every scrap I cut because this stuff does get pretty pricey. I mean, I usually buy by the roll. It's like 300 bucks a roll, depending on the length of the roll, right? So making sure it's nice and clean before I soak it here. And since it is a rather large piece of paper, my sink isn't big enough, so I will have to soak it in my bathtub. Uh, just fill it up a couple inches and this thing just doesn't work. God, fix it. Okay. And I'll try and soak the paper for at least a minute or two, usually closer to two minutes or so, just to make sure it's super evenly soaked because if it's not evenly soaked, you, you know, you get some buckling going on there with the paper, which is the whole reason why we're soaking it to begin with. So we don't get buckling, right? Always important to keep your place nice and tidy with the arts because the arts can, as you probably know, can get pretty messy. Anyway, so I'll just totally submerge uh, the piece of paper, leave it in there for a couple minutes, like I said, and I'll try and keep it around room temperature water, not too hot to deteriorate the paper or not too cold, just about room temperature. Then I'll take some water adhesive tape, which I've been using. I just started using it very recently. It's really great stuff and it's not easy to use, you know, because if you make it too wet, you could, you know, wash off the adhesive stickiness stuff. And if it's not sticky enough and if you don't make it wet enough then you know it won't be sticky enough right so again two minutes later take out the watercolor paper throw it on the board and uh, make sure it's nice and super flat super evenly wet and if it's not evenly wet i would recommend you know taking a sponge and just kind of soaking the whole thing so it's really wet try and make sure there's no bubbles if there are some bubbles uh, they may clear up once it dries but again i'll just do one nice stroke of water across the tape so it's very even and make sure that it's just plastered down to the paper and the board or whatever surface you're trying to mount your paper on. And again, keep your place clean, nice and tidy because things get messy quick. Pound of Celsius, let it dry, right? That's all we have to do now. Uh, I'll probably go let it dry for 24 hours till it's completely dry uh, because I'm gonna actually keep it white. I'm not gonna do any color on the paper itself other than uh, the subject of the piece I'm gonna be doing. See you in the next step. Just a quick look at the Four Seasons Hotel that's going up across the street from my apartment complex. Gonna be crazy. Been a lot of fun watching these guys build this thing. And that crane is humongous. So, gonna be nuts. And good day, everybody. So this is a view from my apartment here. Nice little view of uptown, part of uptown at least. And uh, we had a little hiccup yesterday, so I'm using this heat gun right here to remount the paper and more evenly dry it, right? Because uh, a couple of pieces of the tape did kind of start buckling up a little bit, um, which tends to happen here and there, but with a heat gun, you can dry it quicker, first of all, and you can also dry it more evenly, right? So I'm doing that, no big deal, looks perfect, ready to roll, nice and smooth, nice and tight, and we are ready to go. And uh, while I get ready here, I'll light a candle. I don't know, I like having scents around the house. I don't know, my mom kind of got me into it when I was younger, you know, Yankee candle and all that stuff. Huge fan of like pine tree smells and Christmas smells, things like that. And you know, gotta pick a brush. Gonna get some colors going here in a second. I tend to use Winsor Newton's watercolors. Really great stuff, great colors. Oh, I love that, that cobalt, they're like ultramarine. Super clean. So very quickly, I'm just going to measure out more or less a perfect rectangle here. So when I do cut it off the board, it's nice and even, and it'll give me my parameters for when I'm working on my subject on the piece uh, itself before I cut it off. And to draw it out, I'm actually using this metal tipped Sunstar metallic pencil that I, I don't know, I saw some Instagram posts. The post literally sold me. I bought two of them immediately off of Amazon, but I'm just testing it out here. I've only used it a couple times, but it's pretty cool. It's very satisfying to use actually. The metallic pencil is a pencil with a lead made of special alloy containing graphite and it can be used the same as any other pencil to write and to erase. With significantly less wear, you can continue writing for long periods of time, approximately 16 kilometers, around 10 miles. So it's pretty dope. So here we got some phosphorescent paints, which I'll be using on the piece. 
And tonight we'll get a better example of how that looks. But right now I'm just kind of testing out the amount of paint I need to mix into the water. And as you can see there, sometimes I'll even add some boiling water just to mix up the paint. Really, I'm just experimenting here with these phosphorescents because the first time I've kind of messed with them, I've only used them for one piece in the past. Just working on mixtures and seeing how much paint I actually need to use in the water, especially when I add a little bit of color, which is what I'm doing here. So just testing and prepping. And a cool thing about this technique here, I actually got this technique from ChatGPT. And I'll tell you the story about that later on. But before that, I'm gonna give you a quick little sneak peek of what this might look like once it's finished. And obviously it'll look a lot better at night, right? So, but that's looking promising for me. This is the light that I use, it's a UV light. Don't wanna get cancer, don't shine it in your eye. So they do provide these glasses when you order it. This is the color I'll be using right here. Super sweet color, some blue. This is the mixer with the light on, and this is it with the light off, right? So UV on, UV off. Pretty sweet looking. I gotta keep the light on though while I work on it because you know it's essentially invisible when you're working on this stuff with the phosphorescent paint. So I gotta keep the glasses on, not trying to get cancer. Just trying to get a little bit of cancer, Stan. Dad, mom says to stop trying to give yourself cancer. Just gonna get a little bit of cancer, Stan. More or less, I'm just kind of dabbing the paint on, doing the whole blow technique here, right? Getting that cool effect. But, you know, when you blow it, it gets pretty thin. The, the water thins out and the phosphorescence don't really stick. So um, that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding a bit of color just so I can see, you know, where the design actually is. And I'll probably have to add a bit more phosphorescence uh, once it all dries up. Very happy with the result, nice and bright, which is kind of sick and uh, gonna add the charcoal to it uh, once it dries up and everything. So gonna light a candle and see you guys in the next step.